Hello, hello everyone! My name is Laura and this is my channel, Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video. I am doing the Winter Essentials Tag. I was tagged by Annalisa, who is another fellow booktuber. I will have her channel linked down below so that you can go and subscribe to her as well. Um, she tagged me right at the end of the winter season last year, and I decided that because it was right at the end of the season that I would save it until it was winter the next year. And it's winter of next year. There is snow on the ground as I'm filming it, so even if it's not like officially past the winter solstice, it's winter. There's snow. Minnesota just is perpetual winter, mine is like two months. So. I will be doing the Winter Essentials tag, and this was a tag created by Taylor Reads, and I will have their channel linked down below as well, so you can follow them and see the original video. But without further ado, let's get into the tag. So the first question is, Crackling Fire, who is a cold character that you warmed up to, or that warmed up? And I'm going to go with the main character from A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. But this main character was very much like doesn't care about anyone else, It's gonna fend for herself, it's got a lot on her plate, doesn't have any friends, and I didn't mind that, but as the book goes along, she kind of starts to open up to other people and she becomes less cold-hearted and more warm-hearted, and so I thought she was a perfect character to fit this prompt. Number two, Snowflakes, a book full of unique characters, and I decided to go with House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. This follows three sisters, and each of those sisters are just so unique in who they are, like they're just so different from each other. So they're definitely each their own snowflake, and I loved it. Number three, Gingerbread Family, a family you would like to be a part of. And I have an interesting answer for this one. I think it's interesting anyway. I'm going with The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes because it follows a girl who found out that she has inherited everything from this billionaire in Texas and she doesn't know why but the thing is in order for her to inherit everything she has to go down and live with the family for a year this family who has just been disinherited so honestly I wouldn't mind being a part of this family because I mean I'd be living pretty richly up until that point and even then he gives everybody like a little chunk like this person gets like a hundred thousand, this person gets like two hundred thousand, and but everything for the most part goes to our main character. And honestly, I wouldn't mind being given just like a small chunk of money to go off and like do my own thing, to invest it either in my own company or you know buy my own house with it and then figure things out from there. Like I, I wouldn't mind, you know, I say this as someone who is not rich and <laughs> who does not have this experience, but like, that life doesn't seem too bad, like, eh, so I, I wouldn't mind being a part of that family. Plus, I, I love watching drama even if I hate being a part of it, so like, I really wouldn't mind. Number four, Blizzard, a book that confused me the whole time. A book that confused me the entire time was Catherine House, and this is by Elizabeth Thomas. I just was not understanding what the plot or purpose of this book was. Like, I understand that this main character got into this really hard school somehow, we don't know how, and there's something sneaky going on at the school, there's something shifty happening, like it's Dark Academia. But like, I don't, it just, it didn't make sense, and the plot points didn't make sense, and the book was repetitive, and it just, it kind of felt like it ice skated in circles, and it just kind of went everywhere. So, number five, gift giving, what was the most recent book you were gifted, and for me that was The Other Side of Perfect by Mariko Turk. Uh, this was given to me from a friend of mine who thought I would like it because it has dance as its main theme, and I'm pretty sure she's going to be right. I think I'm going to love this. Um, it's about a girl who was a dancer, and then she breaks her leg, and it kind of ends her dancing career, so she learns to fall in love with musical theater. 
and this is definitely right up my alley so it's it was a great gift number six snowball what is the biggest book you've read this is such a difficult question because like i never remember what was the biggest book i read so i always turn to my shelf and then i'm like does this have more pages or does this have more pages and so i feel like every time i i answer a question like this it's always a different book but it's because i never know which one's actually bigger and i'm too lazy to check for this one i'm probably actually gonna go with breaking dawn um it's it's pretty big it's chunky it's ginormous but i finished it i mean i listened to the audiobook of it so like <laughs> the only way i was gonna get through this monster but yeah this this thing is huge i I know if it isn't the biggest book I've read, I know it's pretty darn close. Number seven, wrapping paper. What is your most beat up book? And my most beat up book is definitely Gulliver Travels. Uh, this was my grandfather's copy of the book. And so when he passed, uh, we were going through his things and he had boxes of books. And I really wanted to keep this because I didn't have a copy of Gulliver's Travels and I thought it would be really special and really nice to have one of the books that he had and I didn't know that he liked to read so to have that in common and to have something to remember him by that I'm gonna see on my shelf every day I like it but because it's so old it's very beat up like oof, oof. the spine is the spine is almost completely come apart from all the pages so I'm I want to handle this with care with extreme care i don't i don't have a lot of books that are damaged or worn out um because a lot of my books are either new or i keep in very clean newish condition so number eight christmas lights a book with many colors on the cover and for this one i decided to go with everything everything by nicola yoon nicola yoon nicola i've heard it said both ways i'm sorry i don't know which one is right um but this has so it's mostly white and blue, but it has a lot of color here. Um, so I thought that was fun, and it kind of reminds me of Christmas lights, because white and blue are kind of winter colors, and then you've got all the, all the actual Christmas lights colors. Number nine is Ice Skating, and this is a book with a plot all over the place. And I kind of... Like, it's kind of similar to the question about a book that confused me, but I chose a different book. Um, for the sake of the video, and so I kind of went with The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I just, the plot itself wasn't all over the place, like, it was pretty straightforward. There's a support group full of girls who survived slasher films type, and someone then starts killing them, so it's happening all over again. So our main character has to figure out who it is and put a stop to it. It is a simple plot. But I feel like we were just taken all over the place with this book. We started off here, we suspected this person, so then we went to this person, then we went to that person, then we went over there, and then we learned about this other new person, so then we gotta go figure out who that person is and what they have to do with the story. I just felt like there are so many elements and so many red herrings that you just couldn't trust anything. So it was just kind of, it, it got you going all over the place, and it just, it was, it was everywhere. Number 10, Christmas Tree, what is one of your favorite characters? I had such a hard time with this one, just choosing one character to be my favorite. Um, I tend to like a lot of the side characters in books. The side characters, the best friends, they tend to have the personalities that I think are more interesting than the main character. Um, but I decided that the main character of this book that I have chosen is probably one of my favorite main characters, Audrey Rose. From Stalking Jack the Ripper. She is one of my favorite main characters. Uh, I love how she stands up for herself and is very confident in herself and her scientific knowledge um, so she won't let any man tell her no because it's historical fiction you know women are like pushed down but I also love that she recognizes that she still has a lot to learn and she wants to continue growing in her skills um, so I think she has a very nice balance and she's very like strong-willed um, and I love the romance and so I think she is one of my favorite characters and finally the star what is one book you could reread every year and the I don't like rereading books I just I don't do it much but I think the one book that I said when I read it and I think is still true 
that I could read every year is The Stars in April by Peggy Wargo. Um, so I read this when I was camping over Memorial Weekend in May, and I loved it. Uh, it was it was such a good book. I, I just very much enjoyed everything about it. It's uh, based on a true story of one of the survivors of the Titanic, um, and it's like short enough. It, it really was like the perfect length and the perfect story for camping, <laughs> honestly. So... I might make it a yearly tradition to read this book while I'm camping over Memorial Weekend because camping over Memorial Weekend already is a tradition in my family. So I think I might bring this book with me every year and read it every year while I'm camping. All right, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you had fun. If you did, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Otherwise, comment down below any of your answers to this tag. If you want to do it, I tag you. Go right on ahead. This is my tagging of you but I'm not going to tag specific people um but I had a lot of fun doing this tag so if you want to do it you should definitely do it as well otherwise you should subscribe and hit the bell to be notified because I'm posting four videos every week in the month of December otherwise I post on every Sunday and Wednesday so if you don't want to miss content from me a great way to do that is by subscribing and clicking the bell to be notified otherwise if you don't want to miss even more content from me, I have bookish social medias and the links to those are in the description below. You can follow me, friend me, do both, whatever, uh, and stay up to date with what I'm reading and what I'm doing, and I would love to see what you guys are reading and what you're doing. Uh, but until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading.